coming up tonight on SLU News 22. The American Ninja Warrior in St. Louis. Google Glass is almost here. See the Blue Man Group for $5. Will you be a match for donating bone marrow? Plus, national news and weather. Live from the Bush Student Center, this is SLU News 22. Good evening. I'm Amanda Hunnickford. And I'm Jasmine Brown. Thank you for joining us this evening. The Bare Naked Statues will compete in the Varsity Vocals International Championships of Collegiate Acapella Finals. The finals will be held on Saturday, April 26th in New York City. The all-male acapella group won the Midwest semifinals at Illinois State University on April 5th. Members Jared Castillo and Jeff Allison took Best Choreography honors and John Holland won Best Arrangement for his interpretation of when you were young. Pickleman's is hosting a profit share fundraiser from 5 to 8 p.m. on Tuesday, April 15th to help offset the cost of the trip. There has been an email targeting members of the SLU community requesting confirmation of SLU passwords. This email is part of a phishing scam. The Information Technology Services stresses not to provide information to emails that ask for personal information, such as SLU passwords. Report any email that asks for personal information to infosecurityam at slu.edu. Meteorologist Jill Swed is in the Weather Center now with our first forecast. Jill, what is going on with this cold weather? I know, Amanda. I am not happy with it either. Today was just a terrible day, temperature-wise, at least, as we were seeing temperatures in the 80s over the weekend. And now... We've been seeing temperatures falling throughout the day. We're actually at our lowest point than what we've been seeing all day long. Here in St. Louis, officially, we're at 35 degrees. Much of the area is in the mid to even low 30s at this hour. And we are also seeing some light rain falling as well. As you can see, things are kind of wrapping up. We are seeing one band moving through uh, central, north central in uh, Illinois. Now we'll be actually pushing through the St. Louis area rather quickly. And things should be wrapping up as we move overnight tonight. But the temperature, temperatures are going to continue to tumble. We're dropping down below freezing, so that has prompted the National Weather Service to issue a freeze warning for the entire area, the entire region. It goes into effect at 11 p.m. this evening, continuing through 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. So we're going to be seeing another round of some freezing cold temperatures, and unfortunately those tulips that are just starting to bloom may be a little bit caught in some freezing temperatures and some a uh, little bit of frost overnight tonight. As I mentioned, it will be chilly. We'll be dropping down to 30 degrees under mostly cloudy skies with a biting north wind overnight as well. After all these rain and flurries wrap up right before midnight, we're beginning to see a gradual warm up as we move through the rest of the week, but it is going to be pretty slow going, but I promise we'll be back into the 60s by the end of this week. I'll be back with all those details and much more in my complete forecast coming up. Amanda, back to you. Thanks, Jill. Those 60s coming up are definitely good news. The Student Government Association is now accepting nominations for the end of the year awards. The awards include the Joseph H. Hodes Student of the Year Award, the Mary A. Brummer Award, and the George D. Wendell Civic Leadership Award. Please nominate students, faculty, staff, or administrators for these awards. The recipients will be celebrated on April 30th at SGA's End of the Year Banquet. Nominations are due Monday, April 14th by 6 p.m., and links to the nomination forms can be found in today's SGA email. If you have any questions, contact J. Bryant, VP of Internal Affairs at sga.internal.slu.edu. This Friday, St. Louis University's newly revamped undergraduate literature, literary journal, The Kiln Project, was released along with the first ever journal of undergraduate research, VIA. Both of these journals are full of writings from your fellow classmates. To check out The Kiln Project pieces, visit T-H-E-K-I-L-N projectweebly.com and to read via literary journals visit viajournals.weebly.com be, be the Match campus is hosting a bone marrow registry drive on Tuesday, April 15th from noon to 7 p.m. in the BSC St. Louis room. Becoming a member of the registry requires about 20 minutes, a few forms, and a cheek swab. For more information, contact Eric Benna at ebenna at slu.edu. The Blue Man Group is coming to the Peabody Opera House the weekend of April 25th. 
SLU students can purchase mezzanine tickets for the April 25th 8 p.m. show for only $5. Stop by the Student Center in BSC 319 anytime this week to purchase. This Thursday, April 17th from 12.15 to 1 p.m., the College for Public Health and Social Justice will be hosting an information session for their upcoming trip to Pueblo, Mexico. The trip will take place from August 7th through the 16th. Students from all majors are encouraged to participate. Previous experiences from this trip have included touring historic sites, visiting clinics and rural communities, listening to first-hand immigration experiences, and more. Students will learn about a health on a global scale and experience issues affecting the U.S. For more information, contact Jackie Bernstein at bernsteinj at slu.edu or at 314-977-3273. Missouri state representatives have proposed an amendment to deny undocumented immigrants and state tuition for state universities in the St. Louis region. Both UMSL and St. Louis Community College grant in-state tuition to all Missouri State High School graduates. At the core of the argument is a debate about bringing educated workers into the state. The amendment's proponents argue that it is not fair that students across the border in Illinois cannot receive in-state tuition. The opponents argue that most of the students have lived more, most of their lives in Missouri and should not be penalized. Our own Chaffetz Arena will be the location of the 2014 Federal FED tennis matches when the United States faces France. The sporting event features the world's top women players. The matches begin this Friday, April 19th and end Sunday, April 20th. For tickets, visit www.usta dot com slash FED cup. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more. Stay tuned. And welcome back. Frazier Glenn Cross, a 73 year old man from Aurora, Missouri, and the man accused of killing three people at the Jewish community Center in Johnson County is sitting is sit, in Kansas City is sitting behind bars in Johnson County. According to the St. Louis Post Dispatch, the suspect is a former Ku Klux Klan leader and a white supremacist. Overland Park Chief John Douglas says that the investigation will approach the subject as a hate crime and a criminal act. Nothing is ruled out. A major vulnerability with encryption software running on many popular websites may have exposed passwords and other sensitive information over the past two years. The bug called Heartbleed was discovered by a team of security researchers last week. Attackers could potentially bug to view communications between users and online services. The exploited encryption software called OpenSSL has been patched and security experts recommend that all passwords used on affected websites be changed immediately due to the, nature, due to the widespread nature of this vulnerability. The well-discussed Google Glass device will soon go on sale to the general public. Google will sell the, Google will sell the Glass tomorrow and tomorrow only beginning at 9 a.m. Eastern. 1000 for $1,500 plus tax. This sale expands the Google Glass program, which began back in 2012. Google said the number of devices are limited, so if you are interested, visit google.com slash glass. American Ninja Warrior is in town filming initial trials for their show. The popular NBC show tests adrenaline as well as fitness and stealth through a series of timed tasks and obstacles. The show is based on a Japanese version where only three contestants have defeated the challenging series of athletic tests. If anyone is interested in watching the filming, they should show up at Soldiers Memorial in downtown St. Louis at 8 p.m. tonight. Trials will begin at 9 p.m. and the top finishers will move on to the show finale in Las Vegas. The MTV Movie Awards were held Sunday and hosted by Conan O'Brien. The Hunger Games Catching Fire won the Top Movie of the Year Award. Jennifer Lawrence won Best Female Performance for the movie, and Josh Hutcherson won Best Male Performance as well. Jonah Hill was awarded Best Comedic Performance for his role in The Wolf of Wall Street, while Zac Efron received Best Shirtless Performance in That Awkward Moment. Mila Kunis won Best Villain for her role in Oz the Great and Powerful. Jared Leto was 
awarded Best On-Screen Transformation for his role in Dallas Buyers Club, while Best Hero Award went to Henry Cavill as Clark Kent in Man of, Man of Steel. Vin Diesel and the late Paul Walker won the award for the Best Duo in Fast and Furious 6. Coming up next, your Workweek forecast. Stay with us. And welcome back. Meteorologist Jill Swed is with us now for our extended forecast. Jill, all this rain has brought some lovely flowers, but I'm worried they're in danger with this I new weather. I know. Unfortunately, the weather today wasn't going to be much help for them, especially with the tulips. They're just starting to pop their heads out, and some of them haven't even bloomed just yet. And I'm, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but they may not make it this year. And it's so sad. But we have seen plenty of rain this year, and that's why, or at least this month, that's why we haven't seen those Flowers popping up relatively early so far this month, and that includes today. We've seen nearly six inches of rainfall, and we're only at the halfway point of April. Typically, we see right around an inch and a half, so that is nearly four and a half inches above our normal. And as I mentioned, we're only halfway through April, so you can only imagine how much more rain we could be picking up by the end of this month. Looking at numbers elsewise throughout the day today, we actually reached our high temperature very early this morning. Officially at Lambert, we topped off at 60 degrees. Now, granted, that was just after midnight. Our low temperature today was at was 38, which actually happened just before 4 o'clock. So things were a little bit flip-flop throughout the day today. But that's all thanks to those falling temperatures that we saw throughout the day today. Now, all the rain is kind of wrapping up. We are seeing the final band just moving through north-central Illinois. That will continue to lift off to the northwest, north and east, rather, as we move overnight tonight. We could be seeing a few flurries flying later this evening as well, as we will be seeing temperatures dropping down to freezing or even cooler than that. So we'll be keeping the rain, or the rain and snow in the forecast throughout the midnight hour. By tomorrow morning, it's going to be a very chilly start, something that we haven't been seeing over the past few weeks as we've been topping off near 80 degrees over the past few days. By 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, we'll be right at that freezing mark with a few clouds around. But as we move throughout the day tomorrow, we see more sunshine than clouds. By lunchtime, we'll only be in the mid-40s only making it into the upper 40s for our high temperature tomorrow. Now with these very chilly temperatures that we're going to be seeing overnight tonight, it has prompted the National Weather Service to issue a freeze warning. That's because we will be seeing those temperatures dropping down below the freezing mark of 32 degrees. It goes into effect at 11 o'clock this evening and continues until 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now, this isn't going to mean a whole lot for us besides the cold temperatures, but those flowers that are starting to bloom across campus could be in danger as those sensitive plants and flowers are really going to be affected by this hard freeze that we'll be seeing overnight tonight. We haven't seen all this rain as well as a few flurries that we'll be seeing later this evening thanks to a low pressure system that is very close by. As we move overnight tonight, that low will shift off to the east, leaving us with more northwesterly winds. So it'll be a cool day tomorrow. We will be dealing with some sunshine. Now, as we move throughout the day and evening tomorrow, we are going to be seeing, um, we have, there is going to be a lunar eclipse, which is a lunar eclipse, which is actually called the blood moon. So the moon will actually look more red tonight and tomorrow, but unfortunately we're not going to be having favorable conditions to be viewing that moon. And if we do see a few breaks in the clouds tomorrow, you want to go outside just before 3 a.m. So if you're awake, maybe you can step outside and hopefully uh, hope to see the blood moon tomorrow night. But as we move into Wednesday, we begin to see that more gradual warm-up. We'll continue to see the sun as we move through midweek and the rest of the week. However, on Wednesday, we'll be seeing a little bit more of a breezy day to accompany those warmer temperatures. But overnight tonight, a very cold evening will be dipping down to 30 degrees for a low temperature, but still a chance for rain and slow snow, likely before midnight. And then as we move through the day tomorrow, a cool days will only be in the upper 40s for a high temperature. However, the sunshine will be out, so take that with as a good thing tomorrow. And as we move overnight on Tuesday, still those clouds, so you shouldn't be able to see the blood moon, but we do get a few peaks. Might be pretty cool to see. Still a chilly evening as we drop down to 34 degrees on Tuesday night. And once we move through the rest of this week, things start to get a little bit better. We start trending upward with temperatures as we see mostly sunny skies Wednesday and Thursday. We will see a little bit of a chance for some rain late Thursday and throughout the day on Friday. But that'll quickly be scooting out just in time for the weekend. And looking ahead, it doesn't look like to be a too bad of an Easter either on Sunday. We'll be under mostly sunny skies and temperatures will be back in the 60s throughout the weekend. Well, those upward, that upward trend does look promising. Yeah, let's hope it stays that way this week. <laughs> Indeed. Thank you very much, Jill. Next, sports and an update on the banned books registry. Stay with us.
and welcome back. Sean Everson is with us now to bring us up to speed in the world of sports. Sean, what is happening with our beloved St. Louis Cardinals? Well, this weekend was great. They won two of three. They lost on Friday night in extra innings, but then bounced back with wins on Saturday and Sunday against the Chicago Cubs. So now the Cardinals are up to 7-5 and five for the season. And they begin their next series tonight in Milwaukee. Milwaukee has a Major League Best 10-2 and two record. And this is the start of an 11-game road trip for the Cardinals as they'll head to Milwaukee. Then they'll head to D.C. to face the Nationals and then up to New York to face the Mets before returning home in two weekends to face the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now, the Stanley Cup playoffs are about to start on Wednesday. The Blues have secured a three seed and they'll take on the Chicago Blackhawks on Thursday for game one. That game starts at 8 o'clock here in St. Louis. Game two will be down at Scott Trade Center on Saturday at 3 p.m. and then the series heads off to Chicago for games three and four. If you weren't outside enjoying the beautiful weather this weekend and decided to stay inside to watch the Masters, it was a great weekend. Bubba Watson won his second green jacket in three years at the Masters on Sunday. He held off 20-year-old Jordan Spieth in the final round of the tournament. Spieth had a two-shot lead going into the eighth hole in the final round, but Spieth bogeyed eight and nine, while Bubba birdied both the holes to take a two-shot lead at the turn, and he never looked back. Watson finished with a three under 69 and finished eight under for the tournament, three shots ahead of Spieth and Swedish golfer Jonas Blix. Bubba becomes the 17th golfer all-time to win the Masters at least twice. The, in the world of NBA, playoffs are just around the corner. The Indiana Pacers beat the Oklahoma City Thunder 102-97 on Sunday. With the win, the Pacers are one game away from locking up the number one seed and home court advantage throughout the playoffs in the Eastern Conference since the Heat lost to Atlanta on Saturday. The Pacers finished the season in Orlando on Wednesday. The Memphis Grizzlies beat the Los Angeles Lakers Sunday as well, 102-290 and now lead the Phoenix Suns by one game for the eighth and final spot for the Western Conference playoffs. The Suns and the Grizzlies face off against each other tonight for the final playoff spot. Two years into his retirement, 22-time Olympic swim medalist Michael Phelps will return to the pool in a competition at the, Grand, at the Arita Grand Prix in Mesa, Arizona, April 24th through the 26th. This will be his first event since retiring after the completion of the 2012 London Olympics. So that's all we have for sports today. We'll be back next week with some more sports coverage. Back to you, Amanda. Thank you, Sean. The number of reports to ban certain books has decreased since last year, according to the American Library Association. In 2013, the Office of Intellectual Freedom received 307 reports on attempts to remove or restrict materials from school curricula and library bookshelves. The ALA said in a press release that the number is down from 426 reports in 2012. The Captain Underpants series still tops the banned books week of 10. The banned book week's top 10 list of frequently challenged books. I must say, I like this new trend, and I think I'm also going to like a change in the weather. Yeah, you're right. We are going to be seeing temperatures starting to trend upwards. Today it's going to be a little bit of a slow go to see our temperatures return back to the 60s, but we are going to be seeing lots of sunshine through midweek, which will help things warm up. And before then, we will be seeing a little bit of some rain also to be introduced by the end of the week, but shouldn't be interfering with any of your Easter egg hunts that maybe some of your younger siblings or cousins may be having this weekend. So it'll be a nice start to your Easter holiday. Sounds great. Well, that's our show for tonight. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, you can always get the latest movie reviews and news online at sluetv.slu.edu. And follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We will be off next week for Easter break, but we will be right back here the week after at 6 p.m. See you then.